Open your Bible with me to the book of Numbers chapter 25. Numbers chapter 25. And I'll be speaking briefly on revealing Jesus. Revealing Jesus. <laughs> Death is a big thing. I must tell you all. You can be here today, you don't know what will happen at 6 p.m. But every time that you have, make sure you use it judiciously, particularly serving the Lord. And I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, we will not miss it in life in Jesus' name. Numbers chapter 25, and I'll read quickly. I'm reading verse 1 to 12. It's a long verse, but I need to read it because the word of God is more powerful than anything I can, I, I can share with you. The Bible says, I'm reading from Amplified Version of the Bible. Israel settled and remained in Shittim. And the people began to play the prostitute with the women of Moab by being unfaithful to God. For they invited Israel to the sacrifice of, of their gods. And Israel ate, ate food to the idols and bowed down to the Moab's God. So Israel joined themselves to bow of Peor in worship. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. And the Lord said to Moses, Take all the leaders of the people who have committed sin with the Moabites and execute them in broad daylight before the Lord. So the fierce anger of the Lord may turn away from Israel. So Moses said to the judges of, of, of Israel, Each of you must kill his men who have joined themselves to Baal in worship. Then one of the Israelites came and presented his relative, a Midianite woman, in the sight of Moses and the whole congregation of the Israel. While they were weeping over the God's judgment at the doorway of the tent, note that, if it is your Bible, of the meeting of the tabernacle. And when Phineas, the son of Eliezer, the son of Aaron, the priest, saw this, he left the congregation and took a spear in his hand and he went after the man of Israel into the tent and pierced both of them through the body. The man of Israel and the woman. Then the plague of Israel stopped. Nevertheless, those who died in that plague was number 24,000. Verse 10. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron the priest, has turned my wrath away from the Israelites because he did jealously with my jealousy among men. In King James Version says, he was zealous for the Lord. Therefore, say, behold, I give you, Phineas, my covenant of peace. Somebody's wondering, how can you reveal Jesus? This story started in the book of Numbers chapter 22. When the church of God was a shampoo of itself, when the church of God was living and dining in the wilderness. And I can liken that church, that same Israelite, to the church we have today. I can liken the same experience that happened in Numbers chapter 25 to the situation of Nigeria today. In fact, when God pronounced judgment over the activities, the immoralities going on in that nation, the Bible says, one of the priests in the presence of the people of God confidently took a, a woman to go and sleep with in the presence of the priest, the Moses. We are in a perverse generation that people celebrate what ought not to be, that celebrate what is supposed to be right. I'm going to shake some table before I leave here. But please listen to me. Some leaders we look up to that should address some particular issues both in the spiritual realm and even in the world, are more concerned about being politically right than saying the truth. I'm asking the Lord this morning that among the people seated there, God is going to raise unto us, Phineas, who will say, not on my watch with this continue. I'm going to reveal Jesus everywhere I go. MTN says, when you pick your MTM sim, he said, everywhere you what? Everywhere you go. It's a disappointment today that we have so many of us who are not representing Jesus everywhere we go. 
we come to church and we look like one who belongs to God. But when we stop church after 12 o'clock, it's another identity you wear. And you begin to disgrace Jesus. I've been crying to God throughout the week that the Lord is going to raise apostles in the marketplace. Those who are going to represent Jesus in their business. Those who are going to say the truth and apply integrity in everything they do. So that when people come in contact with them, they will ask, who are you? Are you really real? Are you still, do we still have people like this in our nation? I'm trusting the Lord that you will not let a day go without revealing Jesus. If I have to take a sample here today, when last did you talk to somebody about Jesus? When last have you actively tell somebody about Jesus? But you go to this God every day and you begin to pray for prosperity. You want God to do this for you, do that for you. But what matters to Jesus? You are not concerned about it. You know, when I speak to some of my friends, they tell me, Femi, do you know what? What can one man do? What is the effect of one man in an ocean? This whole nation is corrupt already. You can't be different. What kind of light do you want to shine? <laughs> and the people go to say, if you can't beat them, you do what? You join, I tell you in a lie. I'm going to show you the influence of one man that can change the entire narrative of what happened to the, book of, the people of Israel. You can stand as one man that can change the narrative of what is happening to us in the church of God, even in the nation today. If you are ready to reveal Jesus. Whether you want to make it a positive one or negative one, the influence of a man cannot be undermined. If you check the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter 32, Exodus chapter 32, when you get to because of our time, we will not be able to read. The Bible talks about a man called Aaron. Aaron wasn't the leader at that time. The Bible says God gave Moses the whole affairs of Israel. But he went to pray on the mountain. Before he returned, the man called Aaron has gathered other gods. He asked people, bring me your jewelries, put them together and make it idols for people to worship. Because of that singular act, that one man's decision, the Bible says God killed so many of his children. There's power in the influence of woman. Oh, maybe I'm talking about men. What about women? In book of First King, chapter 15, remember a woman they called Jezebel? We all talk negatively about her, but she's a powerful woman. She was a powerful woman. The Bible says that woman alone dealt with her husband and changed the heart of the people of God to worship idols after they have suffered loss before. Do you know what it means to convince someone to go and do, to her commit suicide? You must have power of poetry to convince me to kill myself. Those guys are doing a great job. I'm telling you that you wear a bomb. You know you are going to die today and you are ready for it. And you go to kill other people. Whatever they must have talked to, whatever they have done, they must have done a good job on you. Jezebel was a wonder. She was bold enough to tell the prophet in the land. At that time, Israel was ruling the entire world. But the woman made an announcement. She said, you know what? If I catch you at home, let me catch you. I'm going to cut off your head. He was talking to the prophet. The Bible said the prophet of God ran away. Influence of one man. Don't let them lie to you. There was a man called Daniel in Daniel chapter 9. The Bible says, Daniel proposed in his heart not to dine with the people of the king because there is a, there is a purpose upon him. And he ensured he influenced other three friends in his community. And the Bible says those, those guys stood out. They changed the law. There is a law that the king can make that cut. the king cannot overturn it. But because of the experience of Jesus they saw, the fourth man they saw, the Bible says the entire people who are serving the idols turn back to God. Can I encourage you this morning? You can take on Jesus with you anywhere you go. That it doesn't matter where you are. You will shine the light of God. Oh, those who said amen have received it. I mean, I can go on and on. But because of time, let's consider some of the things I found exceptional about this man called Phineas. That made God to change his mind 
God was already in the act of killing his own people. 24,000 people were already dead. But one action from that man changed the narrative. One thing that stood out for me, when I was doing the study of Phineas, I discovered Phineas, was, Aaron was the grandfather of Phineas, meaning that he was part of the priesthood. He didn't think about it that, oh, because we belong to this family and they are doing something wrong, I should join them to do it. Joseph said to the wife of Potiphar, said, how can I do this thing and sin against God? He wasn't talking about the woman. He wasn't talking about the master. He was more focused about God. What would God say if he found me doing this? And you know one thing that is very special? The man who took the prostitute and went to sleep with that woman, that one too is a priest. And that was the reason why Moses could not say anything. Moses kept quiet because it was one of them. In the presence of Moses, he took the woman to go and sleep with her. But there was somebody, the Lord, the hand of God was upon him. He could not just keep quiet. He had to do what is right. I'm praying to God this morning that as many of you who are listening to me, there is going to be the burden of God to say the truth, to do the right thing. Anywhere you go, no matter what the situation or the circumstances, in the mighty name of Jesus, in that place, I saw that God is raising new repairers and builders out of the old generation he's bringing out a new repairer those who are going to build his kingdom people you are relying on to change the things the narrative of our nation they are tired they've been there for so many years but god is making new armies ah if you believe it come on say a bigger amen. amen i can tell you for free god's eyes is on the youth to restore and reform our land and we must get it right. And that is why the devil is not tired. My mentor said, there's one thing that is common between God and, and Satan. The devil and God, they both hate lazy people. They don't work with lazy people. The devil. The Bible says, devil move from one spot to another. He, the person is going to use must be very hardworking. God doesn't like laziness too. He looks for people who are ready for work. God is relying on you. Am I so sure? Isaiah chapter 58, verse 12. The Bible says, And your people will rebuild the ancient ruins. You will rise up and restore the old foundations for the building that has been wasted, laid wasted. You will be called repairers of the branch and restorers of the street. I'm praying for God. I'm praying to God for everyone who is seated there. The Lord will make you the new repairer in the mighty name of Jesus. Two more things I, I want to share before we pray. One of the things that stood out for me was that Phineas shone all the sentiment around being politically correct. He didn't care about the status. Sometimes, when you go into a business meeting and the Holy Spirit nods you to say, you know this guy, he's, uh, he doesn't know me. You need to tell him about Jesus. He said, no, I've come with the proposal. How can I introduce Jesus? It's, it's a business meeting. You know, we rationalize the things that come our way. You say, no, 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 this is not a, this is not a good place. There is time for everything. And the devil will remind you. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, he said, there is time for everything. Morning, afternoon. And then you follow the devil. And let that so waste. He said, no, 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 no. The policy says, I cannot preach Christ in this place. But when you release yourself to the Holy Spirit, he can teach you the best way to minister life to that person. I work in an organization that they said we can't hold meetings. We can't hold prayer meetings. But the Muslim have a mox inside the same compound. They go to pray. If we are having any meeting or whatever, the Muslim guys will change the time so that they will go and pray in the afternoon before they join us for that meeting. If you have anything doing on that Friday that is that popular prayer time, they change the time of all what you need to do. And I walk up to the people in my office, the people that I call pastors, they are actually parish churches. I said, can't we have a place to pray? Can't we just do like a Zoom call? Even if you can't meet physically. Say, no, no, no. It will look as if we are competing with them. I said, but you see there are people. We can't even recognize them if they belong to Jesus. We are now looking like them. Can't we do something? Can't we tarry in the place of prayer? He said, no, 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 no. Don't, don't bring that up. You are just new here. Just try and lay low. And I said to myself, are we not lay low? 
If I can't go to people to preach to them, I'll start praying for them. That's the beginning point for me. I started praying. Soon enough, God started sending them one after the other to me. They come with a problem. They ask me, I see you at the legal service. How did you get to go and do service? How do you travel from Lagos to come? How do you get to do this? What are you doing differently? Somebody saw me in the car. When I come in the morning, I'm praying in my car. If you are beside me, if you park beside me, you know that you will not sleep well before we start work. And soon enough, God started guiding them. They come with their problem. We start talking about it. If you release yourself to God, he can teach you many wondrous ways of revealing him. The problem is not that we, we are not we are disobedient to the laws and orders. No. The problem is that we are not releasing ourselves for the Holy Spirit to use us. There are many ways to do that. If you release yourself. God is waiting on generation of Phineas. No longer Moses. No longer Aaron. Who are tired of doing it the traditional way. There are many ways to reach out to people. Are you willing to reveal Jesus anywhere you go? The most notable thing, which is my third point, about Phineas, for me, as I was studying this place, is that God himself said, he testified that Phineas is a zealous man. Ah, what a credential. You know, many of us, especially the youth, we complain about the government. We complain about the taxes. We complain about the road that is not working. When you ask them, what are you doing to contribute to what is going on? You will find out they are just idle. Not contributing anything. You will be in charge. You find Bro Emmanuel leading the song. When it's time to go and take the camera, he runs down there. And you are seated there. You are doing nothing. And you want service to go on. Everything to look nice. You say you don't have a job. But you are a technical person. Who understands how sound should work. And you are seated in service. And they are complaining about the sound. And you are not volunteering to do anything. In the eyes of God, you are not a zealous person. Oh, generator is not working. You have an idea to make things. I'm just talking about church. What about other places? Have you tried to go and volunteer in other places? Say, I don't need money. I just want to come and volunteer my time so that I can show them about Jesus. A man can only take you as far as the height is currently is. No man can take you higher than his status in life. There is no way. He can only take you as far as his own height. But imagine when God himself is in your business. He's the one taking you. Oh my goodness. He can take you to the place where you cannot imagine you can ever get to. When you make Jesus your own focus. Hebrews chapter 12 says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. If you make up your mind to reveal Jesus anywhere you go, God is ready to transform whatever situation you find yourself. What a God we serve that has so much with him he controls so many things. Why won't he give it to you to support you in revealing him anywhere you go? My conclusion this morning. When you stand out as Phineas in whatever cycle or operation you find yourself, you will eat what God ate. There is a divine reward for it. And you can find that in Numbers chapter 2, 25, verse 11, verse 11 and 12. The Bible says, God made a covenant of peace. Because of Phineas, God stopped the killing of his own people. There's a man, there's a woman here. The trouble going on in your own. As you make up your mind to reveal Jesus, that siege, that war, that noise will stop in the mighty name of Jesus. This is your chance this morning to be part of what is honorable. To be part of what is tangible. To be part of what makes God happy. And he's looking for men. He's looking for you. As an MD, that you told us a story. He said, when he didn't know how to preach to people, evangelize to people, he said, I started with my driver because I know I'm the one paying him. So I still have control. Whether he doesn't like it or not, I will still tell him about Jesus. Think about it. Some of you are seated there. 
you are presiding over ten thousands of people working for you, but you've never thought about influencing them about Jesus. I was reading an article some time ago last year during the lockdown, and you can call it conspiracy story, but this is the truth. In Saudi Arabia, they raise people from about 16 to 25, young people, and send them to the UK to go and be buying properties, buying off churches, buying off houses, properties in the UK. And what made me research about that? We discovered that the one of our church, those guys were offering about 10 times the value of the building. Because they want the church to park, the Christian Church of God to park from that particular street in London. And the reason why we couldn't sell, we discovered that they were the one that owns the entire place. Church, that only church is the only one existing in that community. And they are ready to buy it. If people of the world understood strategy in taking over, if they understood strategy in making sure they are taking the economic power, taking the political power. Taking all of these things, where will believers be? Remember, God says, if a righteous man rules a land, all of us are going to have peace. If you leave it in the hands of those who are an entity, we are going to be frustrated. And the Holy Spirit will be there to comfort you when you go through that trouble. You find people in church going for politics that want to do the right thing, integrity, and yet you don't support them. And you leave them to go and join the people of the world that will put their money down, put their resources down and they get there, you want to come them into church and do Thanksgiving. They will come to Thanksgiving. After that Thanksgiving, they will show up again. They know where they belong. You must reveal Jesus. Any capacity, anywhere you find yourself. In the bank, the yes, when you are at lunch, ask the Holy Spirit to tell you how to tell your colleague about Jesus. When you are in the car, let, let Jesus know. Let Jesus know, Holy Spirit, I need your help. Started the conversation with a guy, one of my friends, Sonny Peters, you know him. He's my prayer partner. We started praying and asking the Lord, Lord, what do you have us do this time? And after we finished the prayer, I went to my went to. The same idea came to us. And what is the idea? Let me share with you. Realize that the songs of the world are not so sweet. It is not melodious. The only thing that is happening to us is that they play it all the time. If you listen to that song the first time and it doesn't make sense, by the time you listen to it throughout the week, it begins to make sense to you. Power of repetition. They keep loading us. If you turn on your radio, they will play it. If you're at home, they will play it. The kids are around, they can say it. They keep loading your cloud with the same nonsense. I will say to ourselves, can we begin to play, buy the stereo, put, we, we, are, we are asking a, a company in, in, in China to design a car stereo for us that only our America can work with it and load it up with some messages. Load it up with some spiritual songs. And that guy in Danfo can play it anywhere he's going. He keeps playing. Let him just drop with one person. I don't need all the people. I just need one person to listen to it. If this one person can listen to it, the Bible says two will become to 10,000. And when 10,000 comes together, that 10,000 comes to 100,000. And we begin to flow. You must wait and release yourself so that you can reveal Jesus anywhere you go. Some of you, the influence you have in the life of some people can make them give their life to Christ, but you never mention Jesus to them. Ah, I need to stop. It's like I'm sharing my body with you, <laughs> but the Holy Spirit sees me. Oh, oh, you can have my heart. You can have my heart. Oh, Holy Spirit. Oh, you can have my heart. You can have my heart. I don't know how many of you want the Holy Spirit to minister to you. So that you can get, you can be part of this kingdom partner in revealing Jesus. Oh, oh, you can have my heart. You can have my heart. Oh, oh, you can have my heart. You can have my heart. As all eyes are closed, you know you are here. 
you, you used to be fired up for God but your light has gone down you are nowhere close to where you used to be and maybe you have not even given your life to Jesus at all you have not had any experience of Jesus how can you go and tell somebody about Jesus you don't know you can't give what you don't have if you are right there I want you to raise your hand I want to pray with you let all eyes be closed you know you don't have a right standing with God you know you can't be part of this kingdom partner unless you first come to him wherever you are in the auditorium raise your hand I want to pray with you you want to hand over your heart to the Holy Spirit raise your hand wherever you are in the auditorium I want to pray with you oh thank you Jesus thank you Jesus oh kapalada oh shadabalada davana there's a new turn for you there's a new turn for you as I pray with you this morning the Lord wants to set you on fire for him oh thank you Jesus for those who are raising their hand perhaps those who are watching us online I want to pray with you this morning that the Lord will refire you the same grace upon Phineas is coming upon you you receive new grace, new strength. For those of you who are yet to know Jesus, I pray with you this morning that you are submitting to God's Lordship and you are making a commitment not to go back to your sin and making Jesus your Lord and personal Savior. I want to congratulate you because you are now part of us and you are now sharing part of this body of what God wants to do. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Church, let's rise up on our feet. I want you to pray this prayer, just a singular prayer point. Wherever you are, stand on your feet. Stand on your feet and I want us to pray. You are going to ask the Lord that the Lord will give you grace to represent Him everywhere you go. It's a commitment. It's a commitment. So I want you to pray it. You say, Father. Father. I'm not forcing you. If you are not ready to pray it, it's okay. But for those who want to pray it, I want you to pray it with the whole of your heart. It's a prayer of commitment. You say, Father, give me the grace to represent you everywhere I go. Go ahead and begin to cry to Jesus. Choir sing. You can have my heart. You can have my heart. Hey, oh, oh. You can have my eyes. You can have my eyes. Oh, 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 oh. You can have my eyes. Lord Jesus, you can have my declaration this morning that we need the grace to reveal you wherever we go same grace you gave the man God Phineas that helped the people of Israel to turn your anger away from, from, from them I pray for all those who have made that commitment this morning everywhere you go you will shine the light of God in the mighty name of Jesus. It doesn't matter the circumstances. It doesn't matter how deep and dark it is. When you get there, you will shine the light of God in the mighty name of Jesus. And your life will never remain the same. You will not beg for bread. Every resources you require to do that which please the Lord, the Lord release upon you this morning in the mighty name of Jesus and it shall be well with you thank you Holy Spirit for in Jesus mighty name we are praying